This is Brent of the Brookbush Institute, and in this video we're doing another kinesiology taping. This taping is for wrist, forearm, and elbow dysfunction. The common postural impairment here is excessive pronation, ulnar deviation, and extension. Now some of you guys can just see by putting myself in that position, all of our desk jockeys end up kind of like this for long hours that could be contributing to some of this dysfunction. If you guys have seen some of our kinesiology taping videos before, you know that I don't use taping as a modality unto itself. It's never a therapeutic intervention by itself. We use it to reinforce corrective modalities that we've done within the session. So I'm going to have my friend Melissa come out and I'm going to explain how we kind of came up with this technique. Now first things first, I kind of explained that postural dysfunction. You might have started to put together the extensors are overactive and flexors are underactive, so we should just facilitate the flexors, right? Just put one big piece of tape right down here. Big problem with that is, is putting tape on the palm of the hand, very problematic. It comes off very, very quick. So now we have to go, well, what happens if we go this way? Well, now it has to be more of like an inhibition taping versus a facilitation taping. And we can do that. Inhibition tapings, we just tape muscles when they're in their completely lengthened position. And what you'll see ends up happening is when you do that, as you bring the tape up, it starts to bunch, which probably also is a bit of an irritant or a bit of a signal to the body that, hey, maybe that's not a real great thing to do either. There is an extensor taping that's very common. We're going to use that. Then we're going to go ahead and modify it a little bit because as I've been experimenting with this technique, I've realized that I can inhibit my extensors and still facilitate a little radial deviation. Right? So I want to facilitate a little radial deviation this way. And then I want to get people out of pronation. I want to get them into supination so I can facilitate a little radial deviation and supination by just changing the angle of my extensor inhibition taping. I know that sounds complicated, but stick with me here. So I'm going to take my piece of tape, and I already measured this one out just to save a little time on this video, but the taping is going to go from the back of her hand to her elbow. I'm going to go ahead and peel off a couple centimeters worth of paper. So I have a nice anchor. Can you put your hand back out? There you go. She's going to start like this, and then I'm going to tweak her a little bit and get her into as much radial deviation as I can. And then the most important thing, guys, is that I start this tape right along the line of her second metacarpal. I'm going to get it as far medial, the tape that is, as I can. So there we go. That's going to help me facilitate that radial deviation. I still got her extensors in a lengthened position, so they'll still be inhibited, but man, I might as well get as much radial deviation as I can. Now she's going to go ahead and face me, and what you guys will see I'll do is rather than go straight down this way to facilitate a little supination, I'm actually going to tape in kind of a corkscrew pattern here right down to her olecranon process. I'm just going to use some tape off tension. And boom. You don't actually want to cross her elbow. That's just going to cause, you know, more stretch in the tape at that one segment and probably increase the chance that you're actually going to pull the tape apart. All right, so I give it a good rub. Make sure that I got it all stretched out. Try to make sure there's no bubbles. Those tend to make tape come off a little quicker. And what Melissa should feel is maximal extension doesn't feel like a great position because it bunches up behind her wrist. She should feel a little force that pulls her into radial deviation a little bit, like ulnar deviation doesn't feel good. And then she should feel just a little bit of reminder to do supination. It's not going to be like a super strong, like she's going to have to walk around like this, but extremes of pronation, like typing, she'll get a little reminder that, hey, I should probably get out of this every once in a while. And when she's just sitting relaxed, hopefully I get her to relax maybe a little bit more in this neutral position than here. 
I think you guys could see where all of those little pieces of feedback over the course of the next 24 or 48 hours might be real good for re reinforcing the corrective intervention that I've just done on her wrist, forearm, or elbow. Let's say she had maybe lateral epicondylitis and hopefully that increases my carryover. The next time I see her, she'll have kept much more of what I did in that session. I'll get her much better in fewer sessions and she'll be back to the sports that she loves. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed this fancy little tape job here. All right, so that's, that's extensor inhibition taping with facilitation for radial deviation and supination. Thank you.